she was reminded and she said, this is one of the best movies I have ever seen. And it was not what we would generally say, yeah. okay, maybe it's a blockbuster. No, so I think same with architecture. Don't think your clients are full. There is a lot of talk about sustainability and some materials may seem favorable in that, others not. Yeah. For to me, it's a miracle. How comes that you make a city run with 20 million people every day? And of course, I think we are more similar than we are. We have talked about so many things, mm -hmm. but uh, since <laughs> we are doing it formally for the first time, so uh, where should we start? We'll definitely talk about uh, your architecture, uh, architecture in general, uh, what we're doing now, what we can do, I don't know, so many things. So let's start with the beginning, actually, uh, for the, our discussion or at that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's start, start with the, your process, like how you ended up being an architect. Like, why on earth you started loving architecture than anything else? Well, maybe, uh, as you mentioned, you know, the, the culture, music was in our yeah. home. I was lucky enough to have that environment. Um, but my father, for, for instance, came more from the economical uh, side. And I always saw this overlap, you know. Um, both of the parents were, and also grandparents were very much interested in culture no matter what is your actual work or background or job. So they always saw that. And uh, that's the reason as kids, we were, we were basically surrounded by such things. And on the other hand, we saw also the pragmatic world. And probably, I don't know, I cannot really tell what, what was the reason. I was very much interested in art always. Um, uh, even before I, I went to the uh, to study, we often went to museums. I, I loved paintings, photography, whatever. And um, for a while, I was thinking of going into art. On the other hand, uh, there was a teacher in in our gymnasium who, who taught geography, ah. and that made me feel also to explore the world. world. Yes, or. It, I was al always attracted by what he, he told us from the world. And I realized this is kind of in interesting. And now in architecture, I think these things come together. You know, on one hand, you have the culture. I always consider architecture as a part of culture. It's not just building, it's building culture. Um, it can be inspired by artistic approaches, for example. And on the other hand, um, when we're talking about architecture, it's always related um, to a context, to the people, um, of course, to geography. Yeah. Uh, and I think there it's a perfect mix, you know, of a match of different interests. I was... It's beautiful. Um, yes. So, yeah. And then I... Well, I started to study and I, I, I liked it and I uh, had to... Had to uh, oh, then, then, and then I can say that you already knew actually what architecture is in that sense. <laughs> Not too much. Well, I got an idea later, you know, I, I, I also read some architecture book before I oh. went to studies, but not too many. Okay. But in fact, if, you, if you're interested in the world or in culture, it, I think it's, the access is easy to architecture. Exactly. It could also be filmmaking. Yeah. Oh, the, the, not, yeah, particularly architecture, that's quite... Because uh, from my experience, I met so many architects, of course, and uh, generally, in, at least our, in our place uh, in Bangladesh, uh, generally most of the architects I meet is, they didn't know that much, but they had an idea or a curiosity, okay, architecture sounds cool or something. And then they started realizing, okay, this is a whole new world. I had a slight idea. Actually, I did not really know in detail how this profession works, but I had an idea what it what it could be. So um, I, I came into that more as a cultural from a cultural side, not too much from a technical. And soon, of course, you learn to do how this should be done technically. And uh, and again, art was very much an influence always because artistic thinking or conceptual art mostly. Is, even performative art um, I was very fond of or interested in. And uh, this helped a lot to develop concepts. 
And in our office, I would say one of the most important thing is is the starting point of a of a, a concept, which is very uh, uh, let's say focused or I'm not strong in a in a way that it's 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 only one way, but it should be clear. It should be understandable because if the concept is understandable to us, it is also understandable to anybody. Maybe the the user will not name it or. But he will feel that there is something like a, there's a there's a thinking behind this. Uh, yeah, it's not just a building or it's just a facade. Yeah, cool. And of course, then uh, you have traveled a lot, so you have seen different parts of the world, and somehow you, you ended up in Bangladesh. So how did that happen? As you mentioned, um, I had the luck uh, to be to, to, during the studies already and uh, to be abroad in Berlin. Then I, I, I could do an exchange um, semester in New York, and um, I saw part of that world. And mostly, of course, we are used to travel here in Europe because it's uh, easy to do. Um, and. Um, Maybe I, I can also come back to a, an aspect which, which I think is interesting in, in architecture. Again, overlap of things. So, um, for example, Sinan, the, the builder of the uh, many mosques in, in today's Istanbul, okay. in the 17th century, okay. he, according to a novel, he told his students or his young collaborators, um, if you want to understand architecture, you need the books, the road, and the work, these three things. And I find this very interesting. So you have your books um, during your studies. So it means you have not only one teacher, you have hundreds, thousands. But the book actually is only information. This is not knowledge yet. Yeah. So to approve whether this is valuable or not, you need to travel. You need the roads. You need to see the people. We're not talking about far distance. You just step out of your home, you talk to somebody. Then you prove whether your teachers, the books, were right or wrong. Yeah. But this is not enough, because if you only discuss and analyze or talk, it's not your own experience. So you need to do your work, yes. which can be different things. It can be architecture, it can be art, culture. Yes, yeah. and then you 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 then you understand what is really a context and what is the value you are looking for. Because as long as you only hear it from others, you don't know what is your value. And only through the work, you find it out. I think it, it's in your case, absolutely the same, you know? While doing your photography, you found out what you are interested in. So same story goes for Bangladesh in my case. During my studies, always I had this wonderful book, Complete Work, um, of Louis Kahn. Uh, Louis Kahn, also I, I got to see some buildings in, in the US and um, it was always maybe not one of my favorite architects. And thing was, I heard a lot and I read a lot, for example, on the buildings in Dhaka. But nobody I knew was ever there and so I could not trust <laughs> somehow because I, I read good things I read bad things. I saw good pictures, I saw bad pictures, and I could not figure out what it was because it's completely different from Khan's work in the US. Yeah. So one day uh, I had to go there. And uh, that was the initial... In 2012. Yes, it's 2012. Um, so we traveled there and uh, I was lucky enough to meet um, architects the right, very right day. We arrived and we went to the parliament and it was a Tuesday evening. So Mongol Bar Shoba okay. happened. Oh, wow. So <laughs> we Mongol Bar Shoba. Yes, very first day. <laughs> so I got to know uh, so, uh, immediately uh, quite a lot of architects. And interestingly, they, they, they were asking me to talk a little bit about my work in Switzerland. I said, ah, you, you traveled here. What are you doing? And then a discussion started uh, and I was really very happy, you know, to see the intensity and, uh, you know, I was also surprised by the questions I was asked because nobody here ever asked me those questions or such questions. And I was not surprised 
of course, that there, there is such a discourse and there is good architects. I was surprised that I did not know about it. And there was hardly any publishing here on Bangladesh 10 years back. Yeah. On internet, you could hardly find anything. So nobody was talking about it. And that was my surprise. I was surprised by yeah. our yeah. Well, ignorance. We should have like at least 20 mega publications or something till then. And we don't have much actually. So Exactly. So I, 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 I saw, okay, there is not only Khan or Mother Islam. There is a contemporary architecture scene which is just fantastic. And it made me so curious to go to come back again and again and again and to explore the country, to see the architecture, to meet the architects. Um, and later I brought uh, our students from Luzern over there. We did a semester related to Dhaka. Revolution. And uh, <laughs> anyway. uh, later I got the chance to, to, to teach there. And anyway, it's a, now it's a dialogue which just happened. It was never, a, let's say, a target to really do a book or an exhibition. I think this also just happened. Um, it just started out of curiosity, I guess. Yes. And also, in a way, it's, uh, made in heaven something <laughs> like you just went Haka and at the day of first you met in Mughal <laughs> so that's that's quite a quite a Wonderful. story yeah because you could go there in any days and you couldn't meet anyone and you could just go, come back and do your work and later you know so, um, I, I had this, the feeling that I, I should really talk about what I saw there um, to my friends and then and, and everybody was very much interested Later, the Swiss Architecture Museum also got aware that I had a collection of um, of, of images and, and uh, plans, whatever I could collect, I brought home. I took a lot of photographs and um, they were really convinced that this, this would be something we should, um, we should uh, expose here. And um, they asked me to do that uh, curation of an exhibition, which I didn't do before in that large scale. Yeah. You know? Uh, I have done others, but not this large scale. And um, thanks to um, the people at the museum, which which really trusted me. And and when they saw the work, they sensed it is exceptional. Um, I had the chance to work on that for a year, and uh, then the exhibition came out, and it travelled, and it was a success because everybody was enthusiastic, wherever the thing was shown, or the book. I feel like it's a, it's, it's a new window for them. I still today, you know, I mean, there are gradually more and more publications. Um, there are many, many famous architects now from Bangladesh exposed in the world, but it's still not very present, you know, whereas if you would ask people about Brasilia or India, everybody gives you five names. Bangladesh, hardly anyone knows Masrul Islam. And this has to be, I think, corrected. It's, it's, it's just not the correct telling of the history. If you ignore Islam, for example, it's, it's not it's correct. It's a crime. Uh, we are talking about, like, in, in 1980s, we, you showed me that uh, Venice Biennale, uh, there's a just two-page article about Islam. Uh, they should have a book at that time. So it's so weird. Okay, let's jump into Dhaka then. <laughs> How life in Dhaka is going on? Like uh, you are uh, now is ten years or more. You've been to Dhaka for so much frequently. Like half of your time is now in Dhaka. So how it goes? Like not the architecture now. That's just the life of Dhaka. <laughs> in fact, yes, it's it's quite different from what we experience here in a in in a sense of a urban uh, scale, most of all, but also the kind of the, the vibrancy, which is totally different from a European city, uh, because uh, it has a, a different uh, background, of course. But um, I feel very comfortable. And I think the reason behind it is that Dhaka, I would really call, is a city. Whereas many cities, yeah, very, many cities here in Europe, I wouldn't call anymore a city. Because city is about overlap. It's not about size. It's not about power spheres shows that yeah it's about overlap of knowledge yeah. of, of of exchange you know uh, this yes yeah. people in most policy about people yeah so, 
and yeah, the, the, the missing of tongue in, in this, that's what I miss every day, like there should be a tongue in every corner, yeah, there's something, uh, I think you know, having just a tongue, it could change the whole scenario of this area, so yeah. So to me, this is really um, a fantastic uh, model, I think, and you know, now that we're talking more and more about sustainability in any sense, mobility, um, uh, also, we're talking in Europe again about 15-minute city. You know, what can you reach within 15 minutes? How how can you avoid too much of commuting? So Dhaka is basically a five-minute city. You know, whatever I have in mind, I will find it within five minutes. Yeah. But I think Dhaka people uh, compares in, in different way because if you want to reach some places, there's cha traffic jam. Or, so that's a different thing. But you can get anything anywhere. It's not like, okay, if I want uh, to take medicine or food, I need to go uh, five kilometers or something. No, it's every, uh, well, we call it para or neighborhood. Uh, there's something, yeah. yeah. You find a doctor. You find a pharmacy or a shop who has a, something. It's that mixing of all kinds of, exactly. That's so convenient. Fruits. Um, yeah. No. So for me, this is a perfect model of, of a city. I don't want to be romantic about it. I know there is a struggle. It's tough. Yes. Yeah. No, we, we need to uh, uh, address the difficulties also. The, we need to overcome this because uh, like, uh, for example, you, you told me about the Geneva Lake, which was 100 years back. It was the uh, ugliest or maybe the dirtiest part of the city. Now it's the most beautiful thing. Same thing will happen, yeah. of course. I mean, it's only natural that it happens. But imagine, you know, what, what happened in Dhaka. The development was so rapid. So many people came. I mean, it would, would be a surprise if everything would be perfect. You have three times, almost three times, more inhabitants in Dhaka than we have in the whole country. And sometimes people say, yes, Switzerland is fantastic and everything is under control and how do you do that? And it's so clever. I have to tell you, it's easy yeah, it's because easy. it's only <laughs> 8 million yeah, people. Exactly. This is not only right. half of <laughs> Dhaka. And I'm, I'm surprised every morning waking up in Dhaka. Yeah. For to me, it's a miracle. How comes that you make a city run with 20 million people every day. And of course, there is a traffic collapse, there is a power outage, things like this. There is accident, there is fire. I know about it, but still, it is like three, four countries. And every day, it, it works. Yeah, we are somehow trained uh, in this way, like uh, uh, we have traffic, we have all sorts of vehicles in our roads, and somehow we think with all these things, like, uh, it's all about it's all about communication, communication yeah. and it's about human interaction you know even if you if i hear the honks of the car i can sense there is a language there is a given yeah. sign whereas yeah. here we think we totally can rely on our smartphones yeah. you know it's all flash and shiny but i rather prefer you know i think we should we should develop a book or something of the honk language <laughs> maybe in dhaka <laughs> because they couldn't really talk with the honks so yeah we, in fact we don't speak in that way in the road in road just honking so yeah, yeah correct or i observe you know how rickshaw ballas are just how they look and and they avoid that there is a collision or something and yeah, yeah. yeah. we would we would fail <laughs> immediately because we are hoping for a red or a green light. No, no, not at all. We we are not like even not even looking at the lights. Actually, actually, technically, the light actually failed in Dhaka. The red and green light or yellow light. It used to be uh, sometimes I think in two thousand or something and two thousand ten till. But now there is no lights and we don't follow the lights. We just follow the traffic. That's it. It's a, again, I think it's about, you know, the direct interaction. You can program things and then you're much more flexible and, and then you find solutions. For me, Dhaka is a city of solutions, not a city of problems. Because if there is an obstacle to be solved, there will be a solution, you know, sooner or later. Please t tell me more about it, please. Because <laughs> uh, this is something we need to discuss more. Because I, I also truly believe in that, yeah, in uh, my generation uh, or even our previous and on, on general, we have this tendency of going abroad and settling there because 
the lifestyle or something. I don't know. I, I, I personally never feel the same. I feel like I, uh, I live like a king in Dhaka. <laughs> so it's a life of a, like a king. And uh, I'm not a like rich person at all. I, that's my feelings. And uh, of course, my friends and uh, so many people will not agree with me. There are issues. But I find the issues are everywhere. It's just the same like here. What I am sharing just my thoughts that, um, um, yeah, it's expensive here. Dhaka is in comparison, uh, it's cheaper, but the reality is in comparison to your earnings is the same thing. That's what I feel. Like here, if you earn, I don't you know, just correct. You spend a lot. Exactly. That's the same thing. And the possibilities are endless. You just need to be with the people and uh, being, uh, this is the best option. If you live in Dhaka, you can meet people every day. So many types of people, not just one layer or one scale. The class system, there's like, from rickshawala you can talk with the rickshawala mama to everyone is a mama in dhaka so it's so beautiful to live in dhaka i always feel like uh, it's an experience uh, to live in dhaka with this amount of people it's a mega city and this summer works sometimes you know people are talking about urban channel and i have the feeling yes of course it is an urban channel but it's also a true channel i mean which million city in the world offers me waking up in the morning and I hear the birds yeah, or I hear the, uh, the, the rickshaw bell. Yeah. It's beautiful, you know, it's still a village. Exactly. And it's like a, what I think, future of, of many things, cities, architecture, um, the future is, is porosity, openness, overlap. Because if you seal things, if you, if you segregate things, this is not leading anywhere. So again, Going to Dhaka is always learning, you know, yeah. and uh, that's one of the reasons why I, I frequently try to be there to learn, as I do from from Bangladesh, in, in any any corner, not only in Dhaka, mostly also in the countryside. There, there are things which are there, solutions which are there, which we gradually now discover that it is important for the whole world. So that's that's also an, an interest I have, of course. To, to, to visit Bangladesh because things are already there um, and we are now gradually thinking of it. Or we have lost things which are still there. And uh, it's always difficult, you know, to, to compare. And I'm not saying over here everything is not good and over there it's fine. And I think, as you said, every place has a beauty, every place has a, every place has a backside of the metal. But Right now, you know, the world is in a certain um, uh, stage and also my life is in a certain stage. Architecture is in a certain stage. My interest um, has shifted um, in the past years and definitely towards the East and especially towards uh, Bangladesh because I felt um, that over here it's quite stagnant and it takes you know, too long to realize what's going on and then you have to, 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 to do processes, which it's fine, democracy is fine, but sometimes it's very slow. And we're tending to, to only look back at our history, Euro, Eurocentric kind of look at the history, and we think, yes, it's, it has been done, it was there, or we know how to do it, which is not true. I think we have to consult every possibility, even if we think it's remote, it's a different world, nothing to do with us. I think we are more similar than we, we think we are. Exactly. Whenever I'm in Dhaka, I never feel like a stranger, never. I arrived there, I felt comfortable from the very first minute. We are not too remote from each other. We have the same questions, we have the same desires and therefore there is not, no such things like a box or a, a boundary or, and... Yeah, that's what I tell you. It's the same thing. It's just different culture and that's beautiful. It's this different skin color that's beautiful. But other than that, we're just the same people. And, and you know, your culture makes it very easy to connect. Because as you said, you have this, for example, culture of Ada or you have the tea stall, you meet, you interact. And there is no, there is no kind of... Um, segregation in that moment so when you arrive there people just talk to you you can talk to them it's not a, even a question too much where you're from what you wear 
it's connect anyone anytime and you just need to smile that's it <laughs> that's it that's so simple like <laughs> I, I really never felt this way because in all the other places where you visit of course you're immediately ask where are you from and then you're a stranger immediately if you you know it's like asking for your name it's like a starting point of a conversation and uh Sometimes, you know, maybe you, you end the conversation and, and uh, your, 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 your um, uh, partner in talk, he, he says, oh, wait, what was your country then? <laughs> uh, you you speak, uh, spoke in so many times about Dhaka, you have written about Dhaka. So uh, do you have any specific plan about Dhaka to like, uh, like uh, for example, you have any uh, specific plan? I don't know, project or anything about Dhaka and that's, uh, you are quite interested. This is really a, a general one in the, in the, the overlap of all, uh, of the whole complexity. Yeah. I could not tell you, okay, it's, it's about one singular building or it's about that urban planning there and here. I think it's the, the as a whole, um, Dhaka is interesting and, um, same as I explained, for example, for the book, uh, or for the exhibition. I I never had a target. Yeah, I just go there. Of course, there is interaction, there is collaboration on this and that, but I cannot clearly tell you what would be next or what I have in mind. Yeah. I actually don't know. And things will come along my way, I'm sure, and they always came, and yeah. one led to the next. For example, we had the wonderful chance now to make an exhibition on our work, which I could not imagine before that this would ever happen mm. but we never had it in mind it was just happening by yeah. interaction or talking about certain topics and then yes there is a, an interest somebody somebody discovered it somehow and so so so, so that's the way i'm i'm looking at at things therefore i i cannot tell you what 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 would be a project i would be doing there or something i, I think again we learn from it a lot, and of course, um, also there is there is always always something to learn from both sides. My interest is just to have a conversation on a high level. Yes, if if people from Dhaka would like to come over here, as we have it sometime as interns, yes, please, and see the world here, and we interact on the same level, and our level and our language is always architecture. That's the beautiful thing. Even if we are not skilled in languages, when we draw, when we see a model, when we saw, see a proportion, we all know what's it about. And, yeah. and therefore, exchange in our profession is particularly easy, yeah. I would say. Yeah. We, we, it's quite universal. Yeah, it's universal, yes. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we, we feel the same. And of course, I'm observing um, projects in Dhaka, like, for example, how you you densify at the same time you de-densify. For example, if we're talking about um, certain high-rise structures, which now um, there are some attempts to do them without air condition, or how do you implement greenery, or how you work with airflow, this is super interesting to us, and I think it should be to, to the whole world. And um, that's something I for sure will observe closely. And we already have some influence from there. Um, mm. As I explained to you, this, uh, for example, that, that vertical factory building with the Jolly, yeah. it would never have happened if I would never have been there. In, in two ways. One is seeing a vertical factory. This is something you never see here. I only saw it in Bangladesh. And they're not five stories, they're 20 stories. Okay, so I saw it's working. Yeah. Second thing is, how do you deal with um, space? in a in a climate sensitive way what what did i see the veranda and i saw uh, buildings um islam's buildings many others contemporary buildings or the school uh poet school by vrooman you know always the the concourse the veranda which is a usable space circulation space but also a shaded space and i thought if this is working there it, it can also work here. Of course, we have, we have a different climate, but at least in summer, we have some similar um, topics to deal with. So we only had to think about how can we apply it um, to our climate and to slightly modify the thing that it's also working in winter, let's say. But that's it. So there's things 
we 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 can adapt, not copy, we can adapt and vice versa. If you're here, for sure you have seen things and that's my belief, you know, the overlap um, of, of different worlds always brings us ahead. Our genes, they're always looking for the most different or the contrary. Yeah. Uh, you are not looking for yourself. You're always attracted by a different thing because if you mix two genes which are remote, if you move it, yes, and uh, it will prolong the lifespan. Exactly. And uh, I think that's the human way. Like we, we, we it's not a single human thing. We, have to. we mixed it. Uh, it's, uh, our, our knowledge is like, we, it's a collective things and we are developing collectively, not for one country or one place or one people. It's about everyone connected and it's the whole uh, knowledge of that we are containing. And so if you mix our thoughts, yeah. this is the best because uh, you may have some thoughts. I have to recheck, are they valuable? year two or not, um, you have to recheck what is what about my idea and I think gradually we see what is valuable for the whole planet. Uh, that's interesting, I think. Uh, the other thing is you already have worked a few books in Dhaka and also you're working. So uh, how did that went? Like, uh, of course, uh, we already discussed about it, that you it, it was not planned in that way. But what is the experience like discovering these architects and now you were collaborating with these books and it's going to publish already, few are published already. So how, tell me that. Is, you mean the, the experience of collaborating yeah, with yeah, people yeah, in, yeah. in Dhaka? Yeah, exactly. And, um, well, the experience... You have the Swiss way, we have the Bangla way, so <laughs> how did you match and uh, what do you find interesting in this process? Because we already uh, discussed about it, uh, so we have a uh, peculiar way of thinking, but we, we get th things done. You have a different way, of course, but uh, how did you collide in this, in these two processes? Right, right. So um, you sometimes mentioned, you know, you have the, the, the Bangladeshi way to do things. Okay, let me start from somewhere else. Please. <laughs> You point out that this is something specific. Yes, it is. But it's not too uncommon because uh, you're many. And I can compare it with weather. Monsoon is the biggest weather phenomenon on Earth. So this is the majority and this is how it works. People think monsoon is an exception and monsoon just happens somewhere there. The most people on Earth are living in monsoon affected areas. So we have to think the other way around. It's not that this here is, let's say, the majority world and that's the way we do it and there is a specific uh, way in Bangladesh. I see the opposite. I think the way you do it, this is, this is the way which a lot of people are doing it and that means also it's very uh, logic or useful. It's very useful. We may consider it as um, you know, different, or some people talk about chaos, or you know, but we have to maybe to, to, to reverse the thinking. And um, what I noticed that, um, for example, certain processes, certain uh, innovation, uh, also certain um, uh, progress is achieved much quicker in a system like you have it than in ours, you know, where we have green and red. And you have many ways, and there's always a way, a solution, you know. If there is a problem, so-called, is occurring, you will have the answer. And it's not too complicated. Uh, uh, there is always kind of, even if it's too late, that's my observation, it's never too late. For example, we plan it out. Yeah. But we have to, because our resources are limited. We have few people here. So I have to know who is doing what on a Thursday in my office. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. As a, I, for example, noticed that in, in Bangladesh, um, even if I think, oh, we will never do that, there, there, all of a sudden, there is a team and they're all helping to do that task. So the energy, the dynamics um, I experience in, in your country is much, much, much higher and much more productive. And um, then in the Western world or in the in the European world, for example, I'm not saying again, this is the solution, yeah. but we have we have, we have got used to a very stagnant and slow kind of thing, and 
Um, we are not flexible anymore. We are not flexible. Yeah, and that's the word I think. Exactly. Quite quickly. Ex I like your landscape. Yeah. I mean, look at look at look at your landscape, which is the soul. Everything is liquid. You cannot tell whether you are an island or whether you are land. And our people is so resilient also because they are used with this shift of lands, a shift of lifestyle, everything. And we, we adapt so easily, doesn't matter. Like, okay, no worries. Because our uh, at the same time, ours is not that extreme. Ours is, uh, the land is so fertile, you can just like throw anything and it will grow. And also, there's another reason why we have 165 million people or more, because we could feed them. That's the basic thing. No, I think in, in terms, again, also now in architecture or discussion, um, how how quick you can you can react to certain questions or topics and how quick you organize something which 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 then brings in a new perspective this is rare because um over here uh you know if you if you um uh, have an idea then two years later maybe there will be the discussion <laughs> <laughs> i think that guy kind of noticed no, no, no. it will happen <laughs> it will happen so i had a very very fruitful and and uh very um, good experience with uh, collaborating across, although, um, you know, uh, sometimes I'm reminded I'm definitely not from there. <laughs> I still have, you know, my old thinking uh, structures and, and then some things by now I for sure know and, and still uh, sometimes I have to remind myself and say, don't worry, don't worry, it's going to be fine. Don't worry. Okay, there was no no response by email, but just go there <laughs> and see, and it will happen. So it's a different um, again a different mindset, and uh, yeah, I think it's 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 very good to 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 work to work together and uh, and something interesting. Uh, you know, we were talking about this um, exchange in Dhaka between people. What I also noticed, of course, we are all connected now on, on virtual things, and it's quite easy. And uh, I'm in daily in touch with friends and colleagues in in Dhaka, no question. But I observed when I'm there, then this is the real thing. Uh, yeah. Then it's happening. Yeah, exactly. And when I'm the very minute I get on the plane, it's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 at first, it feels like I'm forgotten. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not true. It's not true. It's just you need to be there. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. <laughs> the one part we we were discussing about the uh, use of balance in your structure. This uh, I I really love that. Uh, let's let's uh, give me some more about it. Like uh, the first of the balance of structure and the thinking process. Like I um, I will design it and then you need to solve the the clash between architect and engineers and all these things. So please uh, tell me more about it. The thing is, you know, when, when we are now talking about these different professions and, and angles like engineer and architect, it, was, it wasn't that way earlier, you know. The, it, it, uh, the all came from, from the builders and there was no s separation in, in um, specialists. And of course, that's the history and we can not turn back the wheel. It happened. But again, we we have to rethink, uh, you know, these this, this different fields and to to bring them together again, again. Because when we're talking about structure, it's not something technical; it's something architectonical. Even we can talk about culture again. Structures you find even in society. So structure for us is first uh, and foremost a way of thinking, and it's not a, a load bearing kind of aspects or a technical aspect. And many people think w when hearing the word structure, oh, this is, this is a, something rigid and it, this, this does not give you freedom. I believe it's the contrary. If, if you have a, a well uh, thought structure, you have all the freedom to do what you want. But first you have to bring it in a balance so that all the problems automatically are somehow solved. And when we're talking about balance, I think it's the most sustainable way we can build and think. If things are balanced, there's no friction, there's no extra energy you invest somewhere. Or if we now go back to architecture, construction, if things are in balance, they're optimized. 
So if you look at your body, for example, and you stand there, there is a certain balance and your bones are designed in that way. If you would not be in balance, maybe one bone would be bigger gradually and the other one smaller, or you need more muscles on the right side instead of the left. So it means there is extra energy, extra effort, extra material, but it's not sustainable. So first and foremost, we have to look at balance. It doesn't need to be a symmetrical order like the human body. It can be totally free. And then you have to observe, uh, let's say, the, the flow of the forces, which is very logic and nothing to do with calculating. First of all, you, you just think how you stack a pile of wood and you find a way that it does not collapse. So same should be the building, whether it's straight or not straight or stacked uh, crisscross or not, it doesn't matter. If As long as you observe where the force goes, what it does, then you're on the safe side. And that's something we are very much interested from the very uh, beginning of our uh, careers. We were interested in, in looking to this notion of the structure because we also think this can enable things. This can give possibilities. We consider architecture as a stage, public stage. In all of our projects, uh, is it uh, consciously or unconsciously, we somehow find this publicness. Even if, uh, even if, uh, if you look at our first uh, um, single family home, there is that aspect of publicness. It opens up towards the neighborhood and automatically starts a dialogue. It's not a self-centered, um, complete volume. Look at something like that. It is. It is already open, and it has kind of a, you know, it's approachable. So later, also when we did public work or still whatever we do, we we are seeking for um, uh, a certain permeability, um, porosity in a way. Okay, we we have to. Um, we have some obstacles here in the cooler climate. You have to have uh, sometimes a building skin which cannot be completely open. But wherever we can, we try to give that feeling. Even if it's an interior space, we expose the structure because we think that's already the expression of the building. The, the best we can achieve is not to design, for example, a facade or to design an inner facade. We just would like that the buildings express themselves by the, by the structure. And also the beautiful thing you would say about the uh, mixing of different materials, not then one. And uh, it's also how important it is with, uh, with the concept of sustainability, because it's not about just one uh, wood or just using bamboo. It's not the point. The point is how much efficient you can uh, make with the uh, best use of all the materials you have. Yeah. Or what works for what? Like uh, you mentioned about the steel is good for tension, mm -hmm. uh, concrete is good for compression. So it's all those things that it can you can combine and get the best out of it. Not not just one specific material that helps that will do everything. No, that's not that's the beauty of it. There's so many materials and every materials have something different. So yeah, same like in in society. I mean, society only moves if there are different aspects. If there is a society only consisting of doctors, what's happening? Yeah. Or if there is a society only uh, being uh, made of architects, what's happening? Nothing, you know? Because all have the same idea, all have the same qualities, the same skills, I don't know. So society also is a very hybrid thing. And uh, again, it's a blend, it's a mix. So for us, it is important also to think the buildings in that way. We are not talking about, you know, too much about homogeneous construction and everything should be done only in one material and nothing else. And, you know, there's not, no such thing good. like good and bad or there is no evil material. Nowadays, there is a lot of talk about sustainability and some materials may seem favorable in that, others not. But in the lens of sustainability. Correct. But um, it's misleading, you know, you cannot just say, okay, now we, we build with wood everything. Okay, we could, but what would happen? If the whole world would do it, no more forest. Exactly. And now we, every tree which is taken out from a forest right now is wrong. First, we need to bind 
carbonate. Um, if we would build uh, everything in steel, it would be it would be wrong. If we would build everything in mud, it would be wrong because it's it's it high maintenance. You know, you're you're binding energy, human energy, uh, for example, which also has to do with sustainability. We cannot only talk about carbon. We also have to talk about human uh, resources. I'm I'm not saying it's absolutely urgent to reduce all the carbon we can, of course, but it's not so easy. There is no recipe. There is no slogan. You have to see on spot what makes sense and what does not make sense. We, we need to experiment with the things and we need to see the, uh, we need to be always open for the possibilities. Like what can be, like maybe now uh, at 2023, we are uh, discussing about this, maybe after five years when we'll be discussing again, it will be completely different. And Look, we have come through this, for example, um, in Europe or here, especially in Switzerland, there were many labors, labels um, about energy saving buildings and uh, blah, blah. So you had to follow certain rules and this led to totally absurd situations because, um, for example, to, to make a building here uh, low energy, all of a sudden you had to implement um, ducts and mechanical ventilation. Yeah. And of course, the building as such is quite efficient. Yeah. But imagine all the energy which was wasted to produce all that billions and millions of kilometers of aluminum tubes. So now we are shifting away from this, for example. There's another um, uh, funny story. For example, somebody said, oh, if you do a span uh, with concrete, which is more than 16 meters, the ceiling may be too thick and it will produce too much of a carbon footprint. So we cannot give you the label if you span too wide. Okay, now comes an engineer. He spans 16 meter and 30 centimeter and makes the ceiling consisting of little um, beams instead of a slab. Very clever. He reduced two thirds of concrete, but he was not given that label because the span was 16 meter and 30. So see how absurd this discussion can be when you're following the rules and strict uh, reglementation Concrete is not evil if you use it in the right way. And now we look, for example, at Nervi uh, Khan again. It was absolutely optimized. They were not stupid. I mean, they knew yeah. about energy. Exactly. They knew about money. Yeah. And there is a relation. Yeah. And it, 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 you, you mentioned about it. Then, if you uh, if you uh, consider the timing, the the, the if it, it, this building will stand for a hundred years and even more, right. then it's more sustainable. I mean, what does it help? To, to make it in brick instead of concrete and you have to burn the brick every 30 years again, 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 again. I'm absolutely convinced we have to reduce the amount of, of uh, cement and concrete wherever we can, sure, but for now we cannot uh, ban it. And there are, new, there are new technologies. For example, if you think concrete again in elements, which can be reused, like wooden uh, yeah. elements, for example, this is one thing, of course, then there needs to be found the technology how to, to bring out this uh, or to bind the carbon. Then that's another thing. But I think um, we can we can uh, still think about how to use it. And there were there were ways in history which proved it was sustainable. So, and there is a relation always also between economics and sustainability. Nobody would build or have. Earlier, nobody would build something which was too expensive yeah. because you had to be economic in any sense. So if you look at constructions which are tectonically sought in the correct way, they were always very optimized. Also economically. So when things were economic, they were also sustainable. And interestingly, the same word, you know, in Greek, oikomos is household. So whatever we do in households, Whatever we try to save, to, to organize, has something to do with sustainability and with economics. And there again, I think we should not um, separate fields. We should not say, I'm an architect and there is the engineer and he wants to be economic and I want to do this. No, it all comes together. I think architecture is only beautiful when it is economic. It was always the case. You, know, you look at all the buildings we admire, all the good proportions, it has something to do with 
um, reasonable means of constructing. Nobody has did something extra, you know. And again, why are we looking at Nervi and saying, wow, these beautiful domes and the beautiful, you know, ceilings with the filigrane bit, uh, concrete structure? That was due to a lack of material after the Second World War. Nothing to do with aesthetics. It came along, of course, and uh, they, they were working on it a lot. Um, but first and foremost, it was saving money. And that meant saving concrete, and that meant saving um, carbon footprint. Clever, yeah. So it all goes together. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, people are actually more con getting more conscious of what's happening around. Uh, okay, we need to think about it again. Maybe we, uh, this is not the only way. There are other ways too. So there's a beautiful time we are passing. So you have uh, thoughts about it. So please, uh, let's discuss about it more. So what do you think about like uh, in 10 years of what, what's going to happen, like what, where we are going to ours now? So. I think in general it's an interesting time for architects because uh, there are fundamental questions coming up again globally. And some of these questions you had to deal with uh, in the Delta for certain reasons for a long period already. And of course now uh, Bangladesh is very vulnerable towards uh, climate change. So already there for a long time this was on the radar so i think there we can we can benefit a lot from that experience you already have gone through the sad it is but still um you know that's i'm 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 believing that uh architecture of bangladesh is maybe today one of the most relevant in the world because um you address topics which nobody else did you had to yeah, we had to. Uh, uh, you had to find solution, yeah. and um, again, we cannot copy, but we can we can learn, um, and uh, uh, from that process. And I think, yes, if we if we see where architects are shifting now towards, um, it's going into that direction. So we were or are already ahead of many. Things. I'm not saying everything which is built in my yeah, little little bit. Yeah, a lot of well, okay, yes. cool. So, so far, I don't know uh, if I, uh, if I might miss miss something, but yeah, so far it's going good. Uh, you, do you have anything else to add that I might forgot or miss? I don't know. Sometimes you know, things just come together. And interestingly, as I mentioned, we were always interested in, in all this topic of the structure not the load bearing structure but in general or and and then again coming to coming to Bangladesh you know I found this kind of architecture which which really I, I said this is what I want to do <laughs> yeah. but it was not just I saw it and I said oh yeah there's something different now interestingly it was for a certain reason it was already in our on our table you know and it was not unfamiliar what we saw and for a certain period for example um, when we entered, said, "Ah, oh, this is too dry. This is too structural. This is, you know, they they want to. They said it's brutalist or it's this is this is structuralism." <laughs> um, and but we never gave up because we we thought this is this is about architecture. And and now we find it there in a, in a very beautiful, meaningful way. And maybe that's why we also feel comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's not something exotic. It's not something. Well, which sort of that. yes, we have been in that thinking process, maybe in a different way, but um, now here it is, and we can follow what what you are doing there. This is interesting, and we can again yeah. take things back and uh, combine it together and get something beautiful. That's good. The universal and the local. This is always the interesting part, you know. Mm, architecture is very very much bound to context of course and this is the connector and uh, then we have to see where we adapt it locally and that balance i think this is by many of the architects in bangladesh really done masterfully you know and you had the luck uh, maybe also to have louis khan there and to have mother islam there who also both were balancing in between the the universal and the specific or the generic and the specific or the global and the, the local. And again, it's in the sinking of Tagore and others, the home and the world. And 
there is an interesting thing, for example, in our language, in German language, to be born, you can also say, auf die Welt kommen. Ich bin auf die Welt gekommen. Means, I was born. It means coming to the world. So the my, the world. yes, it's or the baby came to the world. Yeah. We don't say you came to Switzerland. We say, it's a very particular saying in, in, in the German language. I, I don't know if any other language has the same topic, but to me that was almost striking. I said, okay, it's a coincidence where I came to the world. So I feel quite comfortable everywhere because I think it, um, it's just a coincidence where I came to that world. But I came to that world and not to Switzerland and not to Germany and not to France and not to Bangladesh. But um, there again, I think that local global uh, thing is something very inspiring and very, very important to see where is your roots actually, but where is also the... Uh, the global influence and what can you take from others, what you, you cannot. There is a difference and there should always be a difference. I'm totally against yeah. equalizing. No, no, not at all, not at all. Yeah, it's just uh, extremism is always bad. That's the thing, nothing else. Uh, the, that's the beauty, of course. We are with the different people. We have different land, different stories, different culture. That's the most beautiful thing, of course. But yeah, we need to collaborate. We need to meet people. We need right. to see how it works. But at the same time, your roots, your culture, your blends, that's, the, that's, that's you. Coca-Cola, McDonald's, this is the bad universality. But I'm talking about proportion light space, which is a very good uh, global thing. I'm not against globalization in that sense. <laughs> because, and you see it through the whole society. Even if somebody cannot exactly tell you what it is, he can sense it. And you should give the same value to each and every one in terms of a, a good proportioned space. If It's not only for the rich, also. so everybody can sense it. Just a little anecdote. In, for example, um, we have somebody uh, cleaning here, and uh, <clears throat> sometimes maybe you have um, the impression Yes, uh, these people, they are watching certain movies, they are doing this and that, blah, blah, blah. And I, I run into this person and uh, something happened. I think this thing fell or happened. Yeah. Anyway, it was a weird situation. And uh, then this lady told me, oh, interesting. Um, this reminds me um, of a film I have uh, recently seen in the cinema. Uh, it was black and white. It was absolutely fantastic. And then I said, well, what, what was the film? She could, she could not re remember the name because it was a film she said, from the north. Uh, then it came to my mind. She was talking about the film by Ingmar Bergman, which is maybe, you know, one of the most, let's say, intellectual kind of approach of cinema. But she could appreciate it, whether you have the knowledge of a cinematographer, whether you are a professor. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. She was reminded and she said, this is one of the best movies I have ever seen. And it was not what we would generally say, yeah. okay, maybe it's a blockbuster. No, so I think same with architecture. Don't think your clients are full. They can realize every detail, even if they have no name for it, but they feel it, they sense it. So, and that, this is something I also discovered or noticed in Bangladesh. Many of the architects who built for a, an upper class, middle class, they share the talents also with the one at the fringe of the society in the same intensity, same energy. You know, there's no limit. There is no kind of, um, you know, I'm doing here. We should all think about, even it's more necessary for the ones who are powerless or even, uh, you know, at the fringe, they should have the best architecture because they need it the most, you know, to get that feeling of, of, of being a human uh, within a, healthy and an um, environment full of, of dignity. Beautiful. Uh, if it is not about architecture, then we could, could talk about foods, but... <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Hopefully, uh, we'll have 
so many discussions uh, in the future, but yeah, this is the beginning and thank you. Also, can, we can have other in Dhaka. Yeah, of course, I will have, maybe the next session will be in Dhaka. Before now, we are signing off. Thank you. Super. Super. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, it's always so good, so good to talk um, about such things and, and to, to see it from different perspectives. So I'm, I'm really happy that I have the uh, opportunity to, to talk about it because you ask the question in a different way that my colleagues would do. Uh, exactly. And I have to think in a different way and question it again. It's yeah. very, this is very um, good also to, you know, for, for moving us somewhere. Uh, yeah. Maybe I will ask you some tricky questions. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> please. <laughs> Thank you.